great and mighty welcome, welcome, welcome to today's broadcast. We are so happy that you decided to join us today. Glory be to God Almighty. We just bless the name of the Lord for His mercy that endureth forever. You know, you, know, you just must not take things for granted. That God keeps you is His mercy. That God watches over you is His kindness. So we bless Him and we worship Him. We adore Him. We give Him the glory for making it possible for us to be together again. You know, there's a song we sing in Africa. We are together again. Yes, we are together again. And it's my privilege to welcome you to the broadcast of today. I hope you had a good week. I did. In the name of the Lord, many, 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 many thanks to those of you that are always with us week after week. We don't take you for granted because there are so many other places you could have been and you decided that this is the place to be this time of the week. Many, many, many thanks to you and a warm welcome to those that are joining us for the first time today. I pray that this broadcast will be a blessing to you. So whether you are new to this place or you've been around this place for a while, we appreciate you, we welcome you, and we pray that something will be said today that will encourage your faith, because that's what I'm preaching about today, and it's going to be a blessing. But let me do some commercials. Yes, Bishop Etiola's podcast. It's over 37,000 downloads from over 40 countries of the world. Did I tell you that Botswana joined us? I don't know how they're going to do that because they speak French in Botswana, I think. Oh no, I think it's Burundi they speak French. You see how bad my mm -hmm, is? But we give God the praise, we give Him the glory, we give Him the honor. People from Botswana, thank you so much for being with us. Yes, Botswana is an English-speaking country. In fact, I had some followers in Botswana several years ago. I hope it's one of you that's been on our podcast. I pray God will bless you. Send me an email. You have my email so we can reconnect again. And you can access that day in, day out, 27, uh, 24 hours of the day, seven days of the week. You can access it by downloading Bishop Etiola's podcast on your Android phone. Or if you choose to go on the uh, Apple phone, you can always uh, download the app. It's called Spreaker app, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. -E -E Once you download that, you are good to go. You can listen to over 250 episodes that we have in there. Please, don't forget to also watch us on Fresh Waves Radio, listen to us on Fresh Waves Radio, and watch us on Fresh Waves TV. You can download those apps too from the two, either the Google or the iPhone, Apple store, you're going to be blessed and you'll have access to it 24-7. I also want to remind you that we're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, and we are also on live TV in Guyana and also in Jamaica. RBS TV 13 in the great country of Guyana every Saturday from 3 p 5 p.m. actually to 6 p.m. local time. We're there and we hope you will join us every Saturday. And those of you who are watching us on in 23 Caribbean island countries, yes, 23 of them, through Mercy and Truth TV. In Jamaica, that's every Saturday from 2.30 to 3.30 local time. And they also put us on, on Wednesdays, in the early morning at 1.30 a.m. local time. We just want to say a big thank you to those of you 
who are watching us on that channel. And also a big thank you to those that are watching us on Logic One TV, channel 112 in Jamaica. We are on there three times a week. And every other Sunday, we are linked to YouTube, and it's live from YouTube. What a great people are in the Caribbean islands. I just thank God for your lives. I'm glad I'm connected to you from people in our church here in New York. They are very kind to want our presence in your countries. May God bless them, but may God also bless those who own these stations. You are doing a fabulous job for Jesus. And I pray the Lord will bless you and do great and mighty things in your life. Opening more doors for you to beam the gospel light to people across the globe. One more announcement. And we'll be ready to go into the sermon for today. And I think I talked about this last week. It's our prayer line on Facebook. Yes. I mean, the whole place lit up last week. And all you need to go do is go on my Facebook. Not the church Facebook, because I got more friends on my Facebook than on the church Facebook. So if you go on my Facebook, Bishop A.O. Itiola. That is A period, O period, I-T-I-O-L-A. We're there every Thursday at 7 p.m. New York time. And every Friday at 7 p.m. New York time. And guess what we do? We pray down fire. If you don't know how to pray, you will know how to pray by joining us. God is doing great and mighty things. And you know what we do too? We take scripture after scripture. We pray according to scriptures. And you know what happens? When you pray the Bible... God cannot deny you because he said, I'm watching over my word to perform it. God is a good God. I like the chorus of that beautiful music. And uh, just to know, seriously, that Christ is with us on this broadcast today is something to jump about, is something to shout about. But before we go on, we have to stop and say what a prayer so he can help us because without him, we can do nothing. Heavenly Father, here we are today. We ask that you will please anoint me to speak and anoint your people also to be able to receive that which you have laid on my heart. Bless us in a very special way, we pray in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. And amen. My message for today is to give you something to go home and walk on. Yeah. You will hear it and it will compel you to go and walk on it. And you know what I want you to walk on? You got it. Your faith. You need to walk on your faith. Scripture after scripture, so many of them, I don't even have time to go into all, but scripture after scripture, they tell us the importance of faith in the believer's life. And if there's anything we need to develop, it is our faith in God Almighty. You know, I love the chorus of that beautiful music. As a matter of fact, I try to research who the author is so I can give him or her credit, but I couldn't find it. So I'm just going to go ahead and repeat to you what the chorus of that song says. This is beautiful. It says, faith sees the invisible. Faith believes the impossible. Faith receives the incredible. Faith moves the unmovable. It proves the unprovable. And for anyone willing to trust, the chorus says, Believe and you will see what faith does. Those words say very, very clearly how important faith is. Faith 
I repeat, sees the invisible. Faith believes the impossible, receives the incredible, moves the unmovable, and proves the unprovable. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Listen, folks. Uh, I don't know what you want to see that looks impossible. If you apply faith, you're going to see it. I don't know what you want that looks absolutely impossible. Faith will make it possible. What people will look at when you get it and say, wow, this is incredible. Faith receives the incredible. Well, I believe in deliverance and sometimes I just want to move some things out of my way. Well, what do you need? Faith. It moves the unmovable. Is anybody trying to ask you to prove something? You don't have anything to prove. Just use faith and you will prove the unprovable. I'm still going to say that one more time before we go today. If there is anything you need to develop, ladies and gentlemen, if there is anything I need to develop, it's my faith. It's your faith in God. Limitless, I repeat, limitless are the things that faith in God can do. Let me remind you of a few things that faith can do. There are many, many things, but I only have time. To tell you just a few. You're going to be blessed by this. Number one. And this is where it all begins. Faith in God. Secures us salvation. Yeah, that's where it begins. Because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2. In verse number 8. For by grace are ye saved. Through what? Faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. So faith in God secures us salvation. And it says not of works. Lest any man should boast. Well that's the first thing I see there. About faith. And why faith is so important. And why you need to develop it. But number two. After you have been justified. After you have been saved, God expects you to live your life by faith. See? The Christian life can only be lived by faith. Look at what Romans chapter 1 in verse 7 says. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written. The just shall live by faith. Did you hear that? The just, just yesterday, got justified by faith, got saved by faith, got reconciled by faith. And from that point on, the just has to live his life also by faith. Now you see how extremely important faith is. Without it, you can forget about living the Christian life. But not only does faith bring salvation, not only does faith help believers with their work with God, number three, faith brings answers to prayers. And whatever things you ask in prayer, really believing you're going to receive it. You know, I'm reminded, I wasn't planning to tell you this story, but I'm reminded of something that happened to me and my wife many, 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 many years ago. She was pregnant and she was trying to have her very first baby. And uh, <laughs> something happened. The doctor at Baptist Medical Center in Montgomery, Alabama, told us the baby was lying transverse. And he told us that from day one, that this baby is lying transverse. But many times the baby will turn, you know, before the delivery date. So that was what we were praying towards. Baby turn, baby turn. 
Baby Tom, baby Tom, we lose you to Tom, we lose you. Have you ever prayed that nothing happens? That was exactly what happened to us. Until the day of delivery came and there she was in the hospital. And the doctor walked up to me and said, Reverend, you know, I've told you from day one that this baby is lying transverse. The baby has decided not to turn. So what we're going to do is cut your wife open and do a C-section for her. And I'm an African. Lord have mercy on we Africans. We just ate knives. And I told him, no, I really don't want this to happen. And I was trying to tell him, that's not a big deal. I mean, within minutes, the baby will be out and your wife will be fine. So, wow, all these prayers, all these prayers. So I went into the labor room and I told my wife what this doctor said. I said, why don't we pray one more time? <laughs> you know, it's, it's not too much to pray. So we decided to stand on if two of you shall agree as touching anything that they shall ask. I remember that as if it was yesterday. And this is many, many years ago. And we just prayed. Lord, you said if two of us shall agree. We agree right now that this baby will turn at this. It's not the 11th hour anymore. It was 12th hour because they were ready to wheel her into the operation room. But guess what happened? The moment we said, Amen, she felt a big pain inside her stomach. We didn't know it, but it was a baby that turned just like that. The nurse came and tested her and said, What? I feel the head of a baby. Where is the doctor? Call the doctor. If he doesn't run and rush to this place, we nurses have to deliver this baby ourselves. To quote a long story short, the doctor came running. We went into the uh, into the room there to do what they call scrubbing. You know where you you wash yourself, you clean yourself before you go into the delivery room. Before you realize it, the doctor looked at me and said, "Reverend, I've been in this practice for years. I have never seen anything like this happen to me before." This has got to be God. And before you realize it, the bouncing baby girl was born. But you know what amazed me about this whole thing? The moment that baby turned, every woman in that, on that floor that were having difficulty with their pregnancy, they began to get ready to have the babies. The babies were coming right and left. And I have to tell you the truth. I said, me first, me first, me first. We started this thing, so uh, everybody else, you wait, wait, wait. And uh, it was such a joy. People came from everywhere. I got so popular in Montgomery, Alabama as a result of this. But no, it was God, and it was faith in God. Listen, people, I don't know what you've been praying about for long. Don't let go of your faith. Just keep on believing God. And you will see the goodness of the Lord on that situation. So faith brings answers to prayers. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believe in. That's what Jesus Christ said, Matthew 21, 22. Whatever you ask in prayer, believe in. You will receive. So since God tells us to pray for our daily bread, you remember Matthew 6, 11, Faith is therefore a key to our material provision, to our spiritual provision, to our marital provision, to our academic provision, provision, and the list goes on and on and on. Please don't pray without it. You know how they say don't leave home without it? Well, don't go on your knees without it because that's what gets prayer's answer. Let me go to number four, prayer, faith rather also brings all the benefits of salvation into our lives. The one I just talked about, which is answer to prayer, is one of the benefits. But there are so many, many, many other benefits. You remember what the psalmist said in that popular psalm? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Yes, there are so many, many, many Many, many benefits. The benefits we receive from Him. They include healing. They include prosperity. They include living a victorious life over sin, over Satan. 
and over all the circumstances of life. They receive. They, they include love. They include joy. They include deliverance from demons. They also include deliverance from curses. Whether curses that people speak against you or curses that you inherit in the family, faith is what gets you out. What about sanctification of the mind? What about sanctification of the emotions? And every other benefit ever promised in the word of God, we receive them all by faith. Let me go to number five reason why you need to do something about believing God and walking on your faith. In particular, faith is the key for an effective healing and deliverance ministry. I have to confess to you, I, I love deliverance. I love to see demons cry out and I love to see demons leave people. Over this weekend, someone was sharing with us about how God transformed her life as a result of coming to the church and being prayed for. It wasn't one time we prayed for this lady. It was about two or three times. But by the time it was over, whatever was troubling her life left her. You know why? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And through this power of Christ, wow, the same power that reveals salvation to us is able to reveal any and every other thing that we need to us. You know what? Faith is not just a notion that some people hold on to in tough times. Mm -mm. Faith is an important element, ladies and gentlemen, to all human life on this earth. Life is precious, but it can also be remarkably difficult at times. You know what helps? You got it. Faith is what helps in times of darkness. Faith is what helps when the enemy rises up and say, I'm going to deal with you, faith in God gives us strength in time of weakness. Without faith, may I say this to you, we are nothing without faith. But let me move on. It is also important to walk on our faith because without faith, it is impossible to please God. I'm sure you heard that from my lips last week on this broadcast and I don't want to belabor the point I've talked extensively about that last week Hebrews 11 6 but without faith it is impossible to please him for he who comes to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him folks Let's face it, believing in God that we cannot see and believing that he is who he says he is takes a lot of faith, oh, takes a lot of faith and it pleases God. What about number seven? I'm not done yet. Faith is also important because it is what moves God to act. And I want, to, I want you to please let this sink in and be well digested. What did I say? Faith is important because it is what moves God to act. God is not moved by your need. That didn't even settle on me until yesterday when I was preparing for this program. God is not moved by your need. Can I say something else? God is not moved by your doubt. Neither is God moved by your fear. Your need may be as big as the city of New York. God is not concerned. God is not moved by it. What moves God is faith. 
When you say, yes, I believe God, my need may be as big as an elephant, may be as big as the city of New York, but I believe God. I trust God. That's what God wants to hear. Once you say that, that's going to be the solution you need because faith is what triggers God to move, not your problems. When Jesus saw the man, you remember the man in Mark chapter 2 in verse 5? This guy was paralyzed and his friends brought him through the roof and through the ceiling and lowered him to the front of Jesus. You know what the Bible says in Mark chapter 2 verse 5? When Jesus saw his friends and their faith, it wasn't just them coming in. It was their faith. It took a lot of faith to break up somebody's house without permission. It took a lot of faith to lower somebody down. It, they just believed it, that Jesus will not save this guy and not do something. He said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven you. You know what the lame man did? He grabbed his mat and went home. When Jesus saw the faith of the lame man's friends, he moved on their faith, on their belief, and on their behalf, and healed their friend for them. My friends, faith. Is what? Moves God to move. Stop talking about how big your problem is. It's not going to be reduced by your talk. Stop telling how fearful you are. Nothing is going to happen because you are afraid. What will make things happen? Hallelujah. It's your faith in God. Let me go to number eight and show you why faith is a necessity. It is necessary because it strengthens us during our trials. And who doesn't have trials? I believe we live in a sinful world. And I believe we live in a fallen world. And when you live in such a world, you will be faced with all kinds of difficulties. Yes. And I'm talking about strong difficulties, wicked difficulties. Your faith is what you need. It will help you remain strong during very difficult, hard times. We have an enemy. His name is Satan. And he will throw everything against you. But thank God for faith. It's your faith in God that will act as a shield to protect you from his schemes, from his strategies, and from his plots. Doesn't the Bible say, above all, take in the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, I happen to understand that very well as an African. So that means that the devil doesn't have just one dart. He has all kinds of arrows. He has all kinds of javelins. He has all kinds of darts. But the Bible says, throw them. Faith will catch them. Did you hear what I said? Go and manufacture a new one that has never been used before. When you throw them, faith will catch them. No weapon has ever been made by the enemy. And no weapon will ever be manufactured by the enemy that will beat the power of faith in God. None whatsoever. No wonder. I love the chorus of that song that I started with. Faith helps us to see the invisible. Yes. And also it makes us invincible. If I may add that. Faith enables us to believe the impossible. Yes, it does. It helps us also to receive the incredible. 
But beyond that, faith helps us to move the unmovable. Maybe there is a mountain in your way. You sat for an exam and you flunked it so many times. And you have only one more chance and it's too late. Faith in God still moves the unmovable. And it enables us to prove the unprovable. The big point is this then. Listen to Bishop. If faith is this important, you all will agree with me that we need to spend time developing it. You know, I actually got this idea from a man of God. I was discussing with him one day and he looked at me eyeball to eyeball. He said, what you need to go and develop is your faith. And I said, wow. You know, we develop every other thing, but we never develop our faith. <laughs> we would need faith, whether you, whether you believe it or not. You will need faith for finances. You will need faith for your children. You will need faith for your husband. You will need faith for your wife. If you're a business person, situations will come up where you will need faith. You need faith every day. Right now, as I'm sitting here, just preparing for this program today, there was a situation that came up in my head and I said, wow, I'm going to need a lot of faith to take care of that one and to overcome that one. And you will see why in a minute when I get into the depth of the message. There is nothing that faith cannot conquer. That is exactly what I want God to help us with through my main text for today. You know, I've not even read my main text at all. I want to bring you a message today, even though I'm almost halfway in my sermon. You know the title of my message? Faith. Under questioning. Huh? You heard me right. Faith. Under questioning. Or if you want to call it faith under cross-examination, that's fine. And the reason I put it as faith under questioning is because <laughs> you can go to school for a whole year and go around bragging about being an expert in what went on in the lecture halls for 12 months. Now you can do that. See, yeah, we're good. You're great. We're good. We're great. Well, you know what I found out? The bragging is not what educators go by. Uh-uh. I've been in school January to December. So what? I was in every lecture room. So what? <laughs> the educators don't care about that. You know what the educators do? They will assemble all the students one day and say, well, you finish your <laughs> classes. Now we need to test you. We need to ask you some questions about what your teachers have taught you about what you've heard, about what you've seen. In fact, in some subjects, they do the theory and they also do the practical. And then the student that was bragging, now will take the pencil and be hitting his teeth like this. Bah, bah, bah. Bragging has ended. Reality has come down. And what I'm going to show you today is reality between Jesus Christ, the author and the finisher of our faith, and the people that followed him, his disciples, who had been with him for some time, he asked them some questions. And I think if you will sincerely and honestly examine these questions, they will help you determine whether you are truly an expert in faith or you are not an expert. In my text for today, you will see nine questions. That's a very good test. Just nine questions. The last one I did for our Bible school in Nigeria, I gave them 100 questions. So this is good. Just nine questions that Christ asked his disciples. And asking ourselves and answering the same questions will help us determine the level of our faith in God. Can I repeat what I said? Asking ourselves these questions and answering them will help us determine the level 
of our faith in God. When God showed me these things about two weeks ago, I said, well, I'm either going to preach this sermon in church or I'm going to preach it on television. And I almost preached it last Sunday in church, but we had a guest speaker that came, so I decided to lay my own sermon aside and then thank God now I can preach it for one hour instead of the 25 minutes I would have preached it for in the sanctuary. Get ready, get ready. You're going to be blessed. If you will apply this, if you will write this down, in fact, this I don't usually recommend or admonish you to write down my points, but these points, hey, you need to write them down because they will help you when you go over them and you turn them into prayer points. They will help you to be able to know how to trust in the living God. Mark chapter 8. We're reading from verse number 14. Now the disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. All right. And then in verse 15. And Jesus charged them saying, Take heed, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned among themselves, saying, oh yeah, he said that, because we have no bread. That's why he said, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. Then in verse 17, when Jesus knew it, what they were saying among themselves, he said unto them, come on, why reason ye because ye have no bread? Perceive ye not yet, neither understand? Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not? Having ears, hear ye not? You can see the questions coming. And do ye not remember? You can see the questions coming. And in verse 19, when I break the five loaves among five thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? That's another question. And they said unto him, Twelve. Then in verse 20, And when the seven among four thousand, how many baskets full of fragments took ye up? And they said seven. At first they said twelve. All right? This time now they said seven. And he said unto them, How is it that you don't understand? You are saying that it's because we have no bread and we are stuck. There's not going to be any bread. How can you think that way with me around? You know what I think about God? I think our unbelief amazes him with all the good experiences we have had, with all the testimonies we have given, with all, with all that we have seen God do in the lives of people, God just looks at us and he says, wait a minute, don't you remember? Don't you understand? Why is it difficult for you to believe me for this when you saw me do it once and you saw me do it twice well that's the question on the exam day and you and i know they flunked everything one of the styles that jesus adopted when he taught in the gospels was to ask questions in fact i found out that sometimes he will give the answers to the questions that he asks. But most of the time, Jesus will just leave the hearer to figure out the obvious answer to his question, like he did here. All the questions he asked them, except two, seven of them, he didn't even allow them to answer him. And I am really worried that the last question went unanswered, and Jesus just went to something else. Why is it that you don't understand? And they can look at him and say, 
We also don't know why. And Jesus will say, I know why. Go and answer the other questions I asked you. If you can give me answers to those, you'll be able to understand why you don't believe God for what you are believing God for right now. It was a classic way of teaching the truth. To be precise, Jesus asked a total of 307 questions in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 307. Through these questions, he modeled the struggle, he modeled the wondering, the thinking it through that helps us draw closer to God and to better understand God. Not just the answer, but to better understand ourselves. Because the questions he asks them here will really, really help them to better understand themselves. It will help us understand our process. And ultimately, ultimately, you will find out from these questions why Jesus most profoundly has a gift of asking questions, especially in the area of helping our faith to be strong and to be developed. Do you realize something? In the book of the Gospel of Mark alone, Jesus asks a total of 68 questions. And amazingly, nine of those 68 were in the seven verses that we just read. Brilliant! Like many of his other questions, he did not require any answer to most of the nine questions. They were asked, I repeat, to help the disciples. Can I repeat again? These questions were asked to help the disciples, to help them develop the level of their faith and what they need to pay attention to in order to grow their faith. What I want to do is to show you these nine questions and attempt to show you at the same time why your faith is at the level that it is today. And if you will pray about this and work on getting answers to those questions in every situation that confronts you in life, your faith will doubtlessly be strengthened by God. Let me give you the background of the story. And then we'll go into the specifics of the questions. Mark chapter 8. I'm reading in verse number 14. The disciples had forgotten to take bread. Neither had they in the ship with them more than one loaf. We got 13 people, including Jesus. One loaf of bread, that's not going to go around. What they should have thought of is, no big deal. Oh, this thing rebuked me. I'm telling you the truth. This one rebuked my faith in God. They should have said, no big deal. Here is another opportunity for a miracle. That is what they should have said. But is that what we say all the time? When sickness comes, do you remember the one he healed you of? When money dries up in your bank account? Do you remember the one that he provided for you three months ago? When you were between the rubber and the road and you were being pressed? Do you remember how God brought you out? No, we don't remember those things. And that's exactly what happened here. They had only one loaf. And the say, yeah, is telling us to beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees and of the leaven of Herod. And guess what they did? They were discussing it among themselves. They were discussing it among themselves. We are in big trouble now. How are we going to get enough bread? Maybe they were even blaming themselves. You are the one who should have bought the bread. Judas, you should have released money to, for them to buy the bread so we will have sufficient bread on this trip. And they were just discussing among themselves. They took his statement the wrong way. And that's what we do when we have no faith in God. We look at the scriptures, we look at what he says in his word, and we take it 
the exact opposite of what he means and of what he says. That takes us to the first three questions that he asked them. It's recorded in verse 17. Look at verse 17, people. And when Jesus knew it, he said unto them, Why reason ye? Because ye have no bread. Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Wow, one question after the other. One question after the other. Number one, why are you reasoning like this? Why are you thinking like this? Then he asked another question. Don't you understand? What kind of reasoning like this? If you really understand, you won't be thinking the way you are thinking. And after that, he asked them, Oh, your hearts are hardened. Hardened? I thought it's the hearts of unbelievers that are supposed to be hardened. Well, when it comes to trusting God, many of us need our hearts to be softened by God. So let me go through those three questions and you need to think of them. Number one, why are you thinking like this and carrying on this kind of conversation among yourselves? That was the first question. Listen to Bishop. The way you think about what you don't have, the way you discuss with yourself and with others, will show whether you have faith in God or not. What comes out of your mouth, what comes out of your thoughts, will tell us whether you have faith in God or not. That's number one. Number two, the second statement questioned their perception and their understanding. It says, Perceive ye not yet, neither understand. Listen to Bishop now. The way you receive, the way you perceive, and the way you understand what God says about your need will show whether you have faith in God or not. My God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, all, A-L-L. -L. Sadly, we don't believe that. Number three, this is a third question. Have ye your heart yet? Hardened? When a person is suffering from hardness of heart, it will be difficult to believe God. You better take your heart to God today. You better take, tell God, break me, melt me, mold me, take all unbelief and doubt that I've hardened my heart. Take it away from me in the name of Jesus. Let me go to number four. The fourth question even sheds more light into why we don't trust God like we show. You know what he said? He said, having eyes, you don't see. They had seen many things that he had done, but they did not apply those things to the need at hand. When we fail to see what he's able to do, when we fail to see what he has done, then my friends, we have no faith in him. Number five, the fifth question for our lack of faith comes from another question. If I say having eyes, don't you see? But he didn't stop there. He said having ears, don't you hear? They have heard his teaching from day one. But it went through the right ear and it went out through the left ear. They have heard the testimonies of others. They have seen great things happen, yet... They believe not. You know what I say here? When we fail to apply what we have heard about him and about our situation and about what he has done for others, our faith becomes inactive. Want me to go to the sixth question? That one even reveals more. He said, and do ye not remember? Even if you forget about what we have said so far, Remembering what he has done should be enough for you to say, forget about it. The one that did this for us last month, the one that did this for us two months ago. Oh, I know we are late. Our payment is late, but our payment has been late before. I know we have not been able to make the payment, but this is not the first time. God has always come through for us. Why don't we remember? Jesus Christ said, you didn't remember. When we fail to remember what he has done for us in the past and what he has done for others in the past, 
we are likely to walk in unbelief. I love Jesus. What a beautiful teacher. What a patient teacher he was. He then refreshes their memories about what he has done in the past that should have made this a no-brainer. He reminds them of it by asking two other questions in verses 8 and 9. And uh, it said in verses, verses, actually, verse 19, when I break the five loaves among 5,000, how many basketfuls did you get? And he said 12. All right? And then he said in verse 20, this is so beautiful, and when the seven among 4,000, how many baskets full of fragments did you take out? And they said seven. In other words, in other words, listen to Bishop now. How can you forget what I've done in the past concerning bread? Specifically, on more than one occasion, I have produced food from next to nothing. So if I could do that, what do you think will stop me from doing this? It's the same yesterday today and forever but you know the one that really touches me most of all these questions it was the last question and you know why it touches me so much because it wasn't the first time he asked this question he asked it in the opening verse we read and in the closing verse he asked the same question he said unto them in verse 21 how is it that you don't understand how is it that you don't understand. Do you notice he asked that question before in verse 17? Yes, he did. It must be very important in helping us to believe God. Lack of understanding. Lack of understanding. There is too much illiteracy in the belief of God. Do you know you cannot serve the devil without believing him? No. You have to trust the devil for what you want from him. It's when it comes to trusting God that the people of God fail. He was not posing those questions to Pharisees or Sadducees or mere religious people, folks. This was Mark chapter 8. You remember? They had been with Jesus since the beginning of the book. Yet, see the questions that expose where they were in their belief in God. This Remember again, it's chapter 8. These were not novices, yet their faith in believing God was elementary. Nothing to write home about. Oh, may I remind you again, this was chapter 8. Look at what happened in chapter 6, in verse 12 and in verse 13. And they went out and preached that men should repent. Look at what happened in verse 13. And they cast out many devils and anointed with all many that were sick and healed many. Oh, you would have thought men like that would believe God for provision of bread. Mm -mm. They believed God for others. They couldn't believe God for themselves in spite of the beautiful things they've done in the name of the Lord. You get to two chapters afterwards and seven questions expose how fragile their faith was. This message is not for you if you are not worried about the level of your faith. But if you want to move higher and become stronger and go to the next level of believing God and trusting God, then you need to pay attention to what will make your faith strong. What are they? Pay attention to your thinking. Pay attention to your talking. Talking to yourself and talking to others. Pay attention to how you perceive things. Pay attention to your understanding of the ways and the words of God. Pay attention to it, especially to His promises. Pay attention to the state of your heart. Maybe you need to take your heart back to God and say, God, it's not the sin of adultery. It's not the sin of smoking. It's not the sin of any other thing. It's the sin of unbelief because that which is not of faith is sin. My heart is hardened. 
it's difficult for me to trust God. And for many of us, because it's difficult for us to trust people, we transfer that to God. And it becomes very, very difficult for us to trust in the living God. Number six, pray by the way you see spiritually. Number seven, pray by the way you hear spiritually. Number eight, your ability to remember and apply what God has done in the past. Pray about that. That God will help you never to forget and to apply what is going on to what is going on in your life. Make prayer points out of these things and your life will never be the same again. Prayer does it, but faith does it even better. You can receive anything you want. You can get anything you want from the hands of God. If you will just trust God. And believe him, you will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Don't forget now, God wants to do great things in your life. But that can only be possible as you trust in the living God. I want to pray for you that your faith will be strengthened today. That from now on, God will help you as you answer these questions. To become a mighty woman of God in faith and a mighty man of God in faith. Father, touch me who is preaching. Touch those who are listening. Take away unbelief from our lives. And give us the grace to trust you at all times for all things. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. And amen. Please don't forget to go online. www.freshandordin.org Slash Give online and be a blessing to this ministry. Until next time when we come your way again, this is Bishop saying, stay in faith. Bye-bye. Or counseling. Please call 917-655-0240. Please visit our website. That's www.freshnote.org. Please connect with us on Facebook. That's facebook.com slash International Church dash New York. Our location in New York is 182-10 Liberty Avenue, Queens, New York, 11433. To give, please visit freshnointing.org slash give online. To purchase Bishop's books, that's deliveringspace.com slash products.html. And for other resources, please visit www.deliveringspace.com. Thank you, and may God richly bless you. Amen. I just want to go there. I'm only breathing your air. Father, hear my prayer. Take me there. Take me there. I just want to see you rather than I'm used to. Finally see it clear. Take me there. Take me there. Take me there. Yeah.